Well, hi there. It's uh, been a month si since I started playing this game and um, uh, two or three weeks um, since I recorded a video on it. I've had it sort of stored away because um, I uh, reached a bit of a point of fatigue with it because it is quite a slow moving game. But um, uh, sufficient time has passed. I'm come, coming back to it fresh. I'm enthusiastic to get back into it. And the reason why I kind of called a halt because I um, I was in two minds whether to call the game or not because the situation is quite interesting. We, you can see that um, the Union have uh, breached um, the stream here and they have also breached it here. So every, every core of the Union core has, has moved. Pleasanton's cavalry is moving around here. Um, the second corps is moved around here. They, they have orders to move around here and attack the flank of the sunken road position here. That's a key position because uh, if the 1st and the 12th corps, who, who were initially charged with um, clearing these woods, capturing the church and taking the cornfields, if they were cleared of Confederates for enabling them to move on Sharpsburg, this position would obviously be a, a strong threat on their flank. So um, the Union have uh, are looking like they're successful here. They've actually just taken Dunker Church, which is in this hex, hotly contested there. This is um, uh, Confederate forces next to them. McClaw's division, who was charged with defending Dunker's church specifically, um, is uh, 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 shattered and um, he's just so he's just lost his orders as that has been taken. So um, he had um, withdrawn somewhat in the face of the Union onslaught. Um, oops, I got a bit of counter disarray here. Um, but one interesting turning turn up for the books was that the 6th Corps had been tasked with aiding in the attack here. When um, um, uh, when the Union saw that um, the 12th Corps had stopped their attack um, due to a stoppage die roll, uh, the 6th Corps was sent around here to aid in the attack. Um, Hooker has, has continued his attack right from the beginning with no stoppage, but now all three of his um, divisions are shattered. And so very soon I think he's going to um, stop the attack himself. So the 6th Corps actually um, halted itself too. So at the moment there's only... Uh, on a surprise, a surprise move. I guess he saw what was happening to Hooker, noticed that 12th Corps wasn't engaged and decided to disobey his orders to attack. So we have 12th Corps, which has, um, these are um, straggler recoveries. These are um, Hooker's 1st Corps recovering stragglers. So he only has a couple of brigades, about four brigades up there actually fighting. And then the 6th Corps here, they've got massive, they've got 10 artillery points here and a big sort of, I think, AAB brigade here and so forth. They've got, Hooker's actually got some artillery there. So the 6th Corps got in a nice position and then inexplicably stopped. Pleasanton's move around here, he was tasked to defend the rear because the Confederate um, cavalry had been moving up here. They since have moved back. So Pleasanton's kind of looked like not got much of a task there. Um, and um, yeah, so, and then um, the Ninth Corps, who ha had Burnside's Corps, uh, got their full activation and they were, they had successfully taken the Hills Hitch, which is what they I charged them with after crossing the ford. They have stopped um, taking some fair few casualties. Um, but the uh, Porter's 5th Corps has um, taken their orders. Their orders are to take, uh, I think it's Blackford's Ford here on the Potomac, so essentially to cut off the Confederate retreat. Now, so you see the Union is in a, a good position. They've taken their objectives here more or less. 
They're threatening the position here, so that will probably have to retire because they're coming around the flank. They're not going on full on attack. And um, they've got two corps here moving as far as the Confederates can tell on their rear area. So on, on that um, on those grounds, it would have looked like the battle would have would be considered a win for um, the Union. However, to do that, I have activated, um, and although some of them have deactivated themselves, but I've activated a lot, all at, at sort of one point or another of the Union Corps. And when you do that, you take um, victory point hits because uh, McClellan would never have done this. <laughs> He would have been a lot more hesitant. He would probably have made sure he had made a gain here um, before he, he made a definite thrust here. I, I, I don't know. I can't really speak for himself, obviously. But um, historically, because of his hesitation and general kind of um, sluggardness in, in, a, in attack, meant that I have done a very unmaclellan move and therefore I am penalised for it by the game system. What that means is I've got 43 McClellan points at the moment, that's, that's minus 43 victory points. And um, we've probably gained about 30, 35, I haven't counted it um, just now. Um, but I, I counted it before I, I stopped um, two or three weeks ago and he was actually in the minuses. Also, not least because um, McClellan's facing 84 casualty points. That's uh, 840, no, 8,400. Yeah, 84 casualty points is 8,400. So that's 8,400 casualties um, in this battle so far. And the... Um, Confederates are on, I think, 63, so 6,300 they've taken, yes. And um, they've taken quite a beating too. Um, uh, so the casualty toll is quite high and that cuts into the victory points as well. Um, the Union take more hits for more... Um, well, the, the Union can't afford the casualty loss for the gains and the the advance that they've made. So I think what what it tells me in terms of the game is that McClellan has been exceedingly bold in his manoeuvres and now is has cast himself into great doubt about what he's done. And so um, although he might have won like a tactical victory, a strategic victory, a total victory will be thrown away because Presumably after the game is finished he will take no advantage and let the Confederates slip away or whatever. So for example, even if I get to take Blackford's Fords, the Confederates could still um, slip away in this direction or such like. So, um, I, but I decided to keep playing because of that, because although the Union are in a good position and the Confederates do not have the strength really to stop an onslaught from all of these uh, Union Corps, they still have the game to play for. So in that sense, um, Lee still knows his enemy, he knows McClellan, so he knows that even though the Union's looking strong, McClellan's going to make a hesitation somewhere along the line. He's going to withdraw where he needn't or make some kind of um, mistake like that, which will give um, the Confederates, give Lee himself uh, some kind of advantage to play with. So we're continuing. Um, the situation at the moment, we've only got, on the Confederate side, they've only actually got three um, divisions under orders. That they're on division, Everyone's on divisional orders in this, um, uh, on the Confederate side in this game because of their army structure at this point. Uh, and what we have is uh, Jones, who is here, DR Jones is ordered to um, attack anyone crossing uh, Burnside's bridge or the lower bridge um, down here and so that's what he's doing and he's actually assisting Evans who didn't have any orders but was in position so has been actually defending it himself. Um, okay I've got just correcting some of the slippage of my counters 
what the hell this in storage um then over here um th these are also dr jones's folks so dr jones is spread here assisting evans very small division there now we have walker over here he's also under orders to defend the potomac crossings um so this is walker in total and then we have Anderson here, who has taken on initiative. He actually had orders to come round and attack the flank of um, Burnside's corps and so forth, engaging the crossing there. He may he started to make that attack, but when he saw the um, Porter move forwards, so that, um, obviating what he was doing here, he, I mean he he might have you know sent himself running around into the rear, but there's not really much happening in the rear. It's it's all going on in the front so he, he took the initiative on an initiative role and um, so he's bringing himself around there to defend uh, Blackford's Ford himself coincidentally not knowing Walker's tasked with it but it, it makes the obvious decision I, I decided that was a fair enough order because um, these are the uh, retreat routes of the um, Confederate Army and so essentially he's tasked himself with defending the armies line of retreat which seems sensible under those conditions and so on the uh, union side we just have like i said before hooker's still under his original orders right from the start of the game we're actually at 12 noon now so um the heat of the day is coming up we will continue on until 6 p.m that's 12 more turns um we've already played out 13 turns and we're on the 13th, 14th so exactly halfway through so Hook has survived a long time but I fear he will suffer stoppage this turn, he didn't last turn uh, still boldly going on um, now Sumner coming through here uh, with the second corps like I said has orders to uh, take the sunken road in its, its right flank here Pleasanton's still looking for the threat that he was told was in the rear over here. And then uh, Porter, like I said, is told to capture Blackford's Ford. And the rest of the Union Army is awaiting um, developments. So um, that's where we are. I will um, enter this turn and then come back with another recording at some point.